I'm a, um, I'm an ass the assistant co-director of the Arts and Humanities Initiative at Harvard Medical School. So one of my jobs is to help remind the medical students that their arts, the music that they bring is just as important as the, the, all the other things they're, they're learning. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and have a little bit of a reflection of um, what's going on around our city and beyond in, in music. And I think it brings together a lot of what everyone else has been talking about. So when, when word of the pandemic started to bubble up in New York City um, in early February, I started, I, I kind of downplayed it. I minimized it and sent and said, this is, you know, this is far away psychologically. It was the other tragically happening in Italy and China, but not yet on our shores. Um, there were happy events that were blurring my clarity of thinking with the new granddaughter and the spring coming in Central Park looking particularly beautiful and a little grandson who reminded me to dance with the shadows and admire the moon. But now today on May 1st, we look back at the dramatic and tragic changes that has happened in just a few short months. And in the blink of an eye, we've entered a new reality. So when COVID-19 arrived in the US, I struggled with what are my roles as a primary care pediatrician? Um, how can I continue being an advocate for the arts and healing? And to my surprise, the existential question of how in this crisis are the arts even relevant was ringing in my ears. And that came as a surprise to me that I would even think that, but I think we were all in such shock at the time. Um, and that question kept on gnawing at me. I could hear the answer, but I couldn't get to it yet. The answer being when all this acute crisis starts to subside, we are going to be needed more than ever. The arts, the artists will be needed even more. But it took us all, I think, it took me a, a time to recover enough from the shock to be able to uh, start moving forward. And like spring, the, with the new flowers coming through the ground, I think we're all starting to see what Tanya was showing, that past the acute process comes the healing process and the desire to do something and to um, make a difference. And that is what artists and creators do. Um, so there's some examples of what's going on out there. There is the virtual performances. The first one I think that popped up was from Berkeley with um, what the world needs now is love is a Berkeley student who was on the plane home to Florida when they closed the school. Her name's Shelby Rassler. She got 74 of her classmates to send in their parts from music that she'd arranged. And it was one of the very, very first of the virtual um, uh, performances that 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 went around and since then that has become a tool of healing for a lot of students who are now disrupted and, and separated from their friends courses community courses orchestras everyone is trying to find another way to come together even when they're apart and it's not the same I mean it's it's hard work and you're listening to a click track and it's artificial but it is something and it's a creative process and I think this is something that's gonna continue even beyond uh, when we can get back together again. There are personalized performances. For example, at Longy, there are two faculty members who stood at the corner of the house of one of their nurse friends. And when she came home from the ICU, they were playing music for her. Um, there are even more personalized performances. Um, in New York, Project Music Heals Us uh, pro provides concerts individual concerts to individual patients in their beds, um, connecting through their iPads and their cell phones. There are even examples of healers who are healing each other. Dr. Colleen Farrell, who was my stand partner in Longwood Symphony, she's now a third year resident at NYU um, on the front lines. And when a favorite nurse died of COVID, she and her, her colleagues came together and she brought out her violin and she played Amazing Grace. And so these are ways that we're healing each other, healing ourselves and healing our community. And there's so many more examples. So I invite you actually at this time, if you have examples of what you're doing in your community, please pop them up into the chat room so we all can see them. And so those of you who know me have know that I've been inspired by the life of Dr. Albert Schweitzer. He was an organist, a philosopher, and then um, he left to practice medicine in French Equatorial Africa. But last night when I was thinking about some of Schweitzer's quotes, I thought about the dates that he lived, 1875 to 1965. So actually, 
Schweitzer lived through two world wars. And actually the first world, world war, he was interned in France. He was, he was imprisoned because he was a German working in a, a hospital in a French colony. So he was interned there and he served as the village doctor during the time of the Spanish flu pandemic. At the end of World War, II, World war I, Schweitzer was a broken man. He was suffering from PTSD, he was sick, he had dysentery, he was discouraged by man's cruelty to man, and he spent years healing himself through the arts, um, writing, speaking, and rebuilding organs. And when he finally recovered, he actually returned to his, his, his um, hospital in Lambrené 10 years later and spent the rest of his life there. So why am I telling you this? I think that that is a story that makes, for me, Schweitzer even deeper. But he lived through a lot of what we're living through now. And he took his time. So time is, I think, an important element. And he also used the arts to heal himself before he could heal others. So I just want to close with a quote from Schweitzer that reminds us to all help each other. He said, I do not believe that we can put into anyone ideas which are not in him already. As a rule, there's in everyone all sorts of good ideas, readied like tinder. But much of this tinder catches fire or catches it successfully only when it meets some flame or spark from the outside, from some other person. Often, too, our light goes out and is rekindled by some experience we go through with fellow man. Thus, we have each of us to cause to think with deep gratitude of those who light the flame within us.